So in this seventh year of Chainlink, I think we've reached a kind of key tipping point or threshold where it's, it's genuinely a platform. Everything about it being a platform is pretty much live. And we're seeing people combine applications using it in ways that use it as a platform, which wasn't the case a few years ago. Beyond that kind of state of being a platform that can solve data-related problems, compute-related problems, cross-chain-related problems, and actually in interconnect all those solutions into a single high-quality architecture for decentralized applications, you're seeing in this, this year, at the, at the end of last year, and then 2023, you started to see the Web3 market grow again. And in 2024, you're continuing to see it grow. So the market that Chainlink is the standard in and has huge amounts of market share, anywhere from 60 to 90%, depending on the type of smart contract or the smart contract vertical, you're seeing that market where it's already solidified as a standard gain adoption, grow, basically now again experience growth. So that's one very positive trend where the place where the protocol and the network has market share is experiencing growth. Then you have this other market, which is much larger and starting to emerge, uh, the capital markets. So that's banks, funds, global financial infrastructures. Those uh, things have hundreds of trillions of dollars in them, right? In the Web3 world, we're talking about single digit trillions. Like we're oscillating between one to two trillion right now for the whole Web3 industry. That's a huge amount of value. I don't know how much exactly is locked up in all the random hedge funds, prop traders, you know, random users of all the use cases, but I imagine it's, only, it's a few trillion more, right? That's kind of what's, what's left out there. Then there's the capital markets, which you're talking about in the earlier days, tens of trillions to eventually hundreds of trillions when you factor in the derivatives industry. So that very big market is now starting to emerge and Chainlink has a very strong leadership position as a standard there, right? She has a leadership position in how to provide data, how to do computation around additional features for smart contracts and how to create connectivity among contracts. And to do that in compliant, secure, kind of reliable ways, which is what the capital markets need as hard requirements, right? They need to comply, they need to be secure, and they need to be highly reliable, which Chainlink has the best record for. So it's being more and more adopted there. So 2024, I think, can be the year when the Web3 market where Chainlink is already widely adopted, that existing market has another growth dynamic, more usage, more value, more use cases, more teams. And the new market, the capital markets, is a place where Chainlink can solidify its lead and its position as a standard. The really amazing thing would be if the Web3 uh, users of Chainlink on CCIP, the cross-chain part, and the capital markets users of Chainlink, also on CCIP, were to transact with each other over CCIP using the Chainlink feeds and the data standards to define those transactions. That would be pretty amazing and kind of a real picture of what's to come because that shows that there's clearly a very strong economic relationship between these two markets where Chainlink is powering both of them and is actually enabling them to transact with each other and so allowing them both to grow by interacting with each other. And these are not just markets, these are the markets. These are the global markets for everything, for all financial value, for all financial products, um, all over the world, right? Because those markets are pretty interconnected at this point. So those trends plus its uh, status as a, as a platform um, and its reliability track record and security track record which becomes increasingly important as something secures more value. So as something secures more value, people's aversion to risk generally goes up because there's more at stake. And when their aversion to risk goes up, they generally choose the more reliable thing, the more secure thing. And Chainlink has now processed uh, over 9.6 trillion in transaction value. It's, it's enabled that much and it's done that securely. And there's no other system that does what Chainlink does that comes anywhere close to that. So all those dynamics at the same time this year possibly coming together can show not only what Chainlink is capable of, but that it can power even more than 9.6 trillion in transaction value, um, which 9.6 is already a lot, but we're talking about significantly larger amounts than that.